super viral right now that has gotten the attention of people all around the world, uh, especially the fight community, and even just regular old civilians that like to go to the bar. Um, and it definitely got the attention of a lot of my friends, being that I'm in the mixed martial arts world, and they wanted my opinion on this viral video. The video that's going viral is of Joe Schillen, okay? Joe Schillen is a professional fighter on many levels. He's a bad motherfucker, period. The man is a pro boxer, pro kickboxer, pro mixed martial artist, MMA guy, meaning like some of you guys don't know what happens in the UFC, Bellator, uh, PFL, things of the leagues of that nature. Um, and I believe that's it. So professional around many different ways. He became a professional in 2006. Okay. So this guy's been kicking ass or getting his ass kicked, whatever it is. He's got an impressive record, not the best, but pretty impressive. And he's just a bad motherfucker. Well, apparently the video was of Kurt, I'm sorry, Joe Schillen. Well, let me just describe it to you. Basically in his words, and he, he did, he did post the video of what happened and he did comment on it to let everybody know what, what was it that happened and why it happened. So you see Joe walking around at a bar. Here's the bar to your, the right side if you're looking at the actual video. And to the left is just a, a table of people that you can't really see, but they happen to be talking to this, this clown, this dude. So according to Joe, this guy had already been annoying, loud, obnoxious, and giving him dirty looks for already about 45 minutes since Joe's been there. You know, mixed martial artists, guys, believe it or not, we are as, as disciplined as it comes. You know, you always have your dodo head that gets out of line and, and doesn't, doesn't represent us the right way. But for the most part, 8 out of 10, if not 9 out of 10 mixed martial artists of any martial art, once you know you got some serious skills, you know, you hold, you tend to hold back a lot more often when it comes to, uh, to the possibility of fighting, to getting physical. You know what you are capable of. You know that you're a dangerous person compared to the average person. And you know, I would say easily, if you are a good, well-trained mixed martial artist, that you would beat, uh, you know, eight out of 10 guys, uh, unless they did martial arts themselves. So we're trained to hold back because we know of our confidence. And we, we really typically don't want to hurt somebody. We'd rather do it professionally. We'd rather honor our discipline, honor, honor our martial art by not getting in some wild ass street fights or getting out of line because we know it looks bad. We know that people are still learning about mixed martial arts in, in, in all ways. And they're, they're kind of getting away from the whole, it's, you know, it's a cock fight or it's, it's a, you know, it's very caveman type shit. It's brutal. Yeah, it can be brutal, but I think they're appreciating the violence behind it because they're, they're learning about the discipline. So on that note, Joe Schilling, um, though he's known as a vicious fighter and, and, and he's an aggressive fighter and he's not passive and, He's dangerous and he's known for cutting with his elbows and just being very, you know, straightforward at you. Um, he doesn't have that type of reputation in the gyms and outside of fighting. Instead, he's got a very good reputation. So Joe's coming around and he's passing this guy who Joe has already been annoyed by, has heard him talking all night, being a, a basically a belligerent drunk and so on and so forth. And what really ticked Joe off was at some point, the guy was yelling out like, like rap, rap lyrics. And he would just randomly say some rap lyrics. And um, he said that the guy basically hadn't said, hadn't done, dropped the N-word until this black, I don't know if he was a, a, a busboy or a waiter or whatever. He, he was an employee at, at the restaurant. Walked by, I guess they bumped each other. This is not on video, but I guess they bumped each other. And, and you know, th this white dude looked at him and said, and, and said a derogatory, he used a, a, Line from a song, basically saying something about my nigga, my N word. So, um, you know, Joe was basically was, you know, up to here with it. But here's where it's in his defense. And this is clearly, clearly on video. As Joe's trying to walk by this way, this dude who's looking, he's looking this way. Okay. So uh, I'm going to try to aim at you guys. You guys are the camera that's recording the video. So now I'm Joe. Okay. So this, this dingleberry right here is staring that way at a, at a table of people, just being a clown, whatever it is, being a buffoon. And somewhere there, he, you know, he leans. He doesn't see Joe coming. He doesn't see Joe coming this way. So he leans, you know, in here. And Joe, 
literally just stops him like this. Didn't push him, didn't shove him, just caught him like that, kind of letting him know, hey, psh, you got somebody walking around you. You got somebody passing by. So Joe says that when he did that, the, the guy's immediate response was something in the realms of, oh, my bad, you know, you know my bad. He, he, he apologized. And, he's, and you can see Joe, as, I'm, as I'm, I'm Joe and I'm walking to the camera, you can see Joe turn, to the, turn, turn around like, like, yeah, like it's okay. Like, it's all good, you know, no worries, no big deal, whatever, you know, I don't know what he said verbatim, but, you know, he basically, you see this in the camera. And then not even another step, I guess the guy said something, um, forgot what it was, you know, uh, some, something that really got Joe's attention, like, what the fuck? And Joe turns around, and all you see is Joe's back, and you see the guy, probably a quarter, maybe a half of the guy's body, and as Joe turns around and steps him, the guy literally flinches at him. Does one of those things. Joe quickly, I mean, this reaction was, was bananas quick, caught him with a nice little uppercut, which was already enough. That guy was going down. He was probably out already. And then follow through with a left cross, left punch, left hook. The guy falls down. I don't think he hit his head on the chair, on the stool. He might have tapped it, but he falls down. He's kind of stiff board. And Joe turns right around, cool, cool as a fucking winter day, and just kept walking like nothing. So now here's, here's the debate. Here's the, uh, I don't think there's an argument, but I guess here's the, the, the debate. Here's the questions that my friends were asking me, and, and I, I'm sure. I've even seen it on podcasts. There has been fighters who have been responding to what they saw, professional fighters, friends of Joe's, uh, famous fighters, Michael Bisbee on his, on his podcast, um, you know, plenty of other people. I'm sure Joe Rogan will be talking about it soon. Well, everybody kind of has a different opinion, but I guess they're all kind of leaning towards, Joe, you didn't have to do that. Joe, you're an MMA assassin. You're a kickboxing champ. You know, you're a professional boxer. You didn't have to knock that guy out like that. You know he wasn't going to do anything. You know he didn't have a chance. You know, I, I, I don't know. Uh, I can't speak that much for these guys. Uh, I know Michael Bisbee, he, 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 you know, he alluded to it just a little bit, but the other people were just like, hey, you probably could have, you probably could have calmed yourself down and not done that. Now, here's what I really think. And I'm on his side. Joe was not going to go out of his way to go pick a fight with this guy. At least there's no evidence for that at all. Instead, when he was going, he went outside to smoke a cigarette. Or I don't know if he was smoking weed or smoking a cigarette, but he said he went outside to smoke. I would hate to think that he smoked cigarettes because he's a professional fighter. Hopefully it was a joint. But he went outside to smoke. It's when he was coming back to go to his table that this whole ordeal happened. You, when I tell you, it's clearly evident that one, the guy did bump into him. Two, that Joe paused his hand right here and caught him with all due respect and kept going. No push, no shove, no nothing. Kept going. As he, did, as he kept going, you, you can't see that the guy said something, but Joe said he said something, and then he goes, nope, it's all good. Turns back and then takes another step. Now all you see is Joe turn this way, turn the opposite way, like, what the fuck did you just say? And, and as he steps to, to the guy, like, what did you say? You see the guy clearly flinch. Listen, folks, whether Joe was pissed off that the guy's a, an asshole, borderline racist, and annoying as fuck, you know, one of those dudes at that bar, the, that, that guy at the bar that you want to avoid, whether or not he was pissed and wanted to hit him, he had the right to fucking drop that guy the minute he flinched at him, period. That is it. And I don't care if you're a professional fighter or not. That can go either way. Either you know it's a flinch because your, your reaction time is so good, you already gauge the distance that you are from this person. So because you're used to pro fighters, amateur fighters, good trained fighters, nobody's going to be able to touch you that quick, you know, at that distance. If you're that measured and you're paying that much attention, remember, these guys are at a bar. I'm assuming they all probably had a couple of... We know that asshole did. I don't know Joe did. But again... If you're that good and you don't care to, to flinch, you got a granite chin. You've never been knocked out. You're at a bar. This guy looks like a dodo head. Cool. That's up to you. That's up to you. But in, in, in defense or, or to play devil's advocate, 
How many times do we, how often do we see videos of somebody just getting sparked right out of nowhere and they're in the middle of fucking talking? They're in the middle of some face-to-face banter. Oh, 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 your girl grabbed me or, or you were looking at her. Well, bam, knockout. So who the fuck's supposed to wait for who? Now, granted, if words are just being exchanged, no one should flinch at anyone. You know, that that's, you know, there's no threat. If there's no threat right there, you know, by, by law, by rule, by whatever you want to call it, you know, righteous path of man, you shouldn't just swing on somebody, okay? So if it's just verbal abuse, it's verbal abuse. But the minute you flinch, the minute you show something, something offensive, something in attack form, something like you are ready to fight, that person on the other side of you has the right to react, ready to fight as well, to know the first punch, react, period, because you did an action, even if it was a stupid-ass action as, as, as a fucking seventh grade, you know, flinching at somebody bullshit. So there is the righteous part about it. He, Joe had every right to do that. Every right to do that. Even if he never heard a word out of that guy's mouth. The minute that guy says something slick, Joe turns around, all this on camera, and the dude flinches, flinches. And remember, that guy was belligerently drunk. That was proven. If I didn't say it, I'll say it right now. So after all this happened, a bartender, if not two, and a... Uh, uh, the the manager, the bar manager, or maybe it was the maybe it was the restaurant manager, along with the DJ and the server. They all said that this guy comes all the time, is always a fucking pain in the ass, always drunk, always bothering people. They've had complaints on him before. They've had to ask him to leave plenty of times before. So this is this, this was justice, if anything. But I just want to make it clear. It didn't have to be justifiable outside of the fact that that guy showed a threat. He threatened Joe's health and well-being, period. You know, you can say life, that's a little extreme, but whatever. He threatened his space. He threatened, he, he initiated and showed some type of action like if something was to follow. Joe just reacted. Now, defending Joe, if he did want to do it, and he was annoyed, and he was happy that he did it, he was begging for an opportunity to level this fucking guy, I fucking applaud you, my brother, I applaud you, and I'm biased as fuck, and I want to tell you guys a little story, and maybe a couple, try to keep it short, so one of the reasons that I really believe in that type of shit, as long as it's done the right way, done the right way, if that, if I was there, and that guy was annoying the fuck out of me, and he said some racist shit to the to the waiter and or seem racist and he's you know bothering people left and right and it's obvious that he's a drunk and he keeps bothering people man yeah deep down inside i would probably think god that's the type of motherfucker that i would love to just backhand and to tell him shut the fuck up you're annoying as hell and you're bothering everybody you should probably drink some water and get the fuck out of here i would love to do that i've never done that to anybody i've never not even gotten close but I would, you know, that, that thought would cross my mind. I'm sure other people would have crossed it not too far from it. Maybe maybe not the, the physical part, but maybe, oh, how annoying. What the fuck? I hate those type of guys. Oh, go, go somewhere, you know? We all almost think the same thing. So, but compared to the stories that I want to tell you, so good friend of mine, Chris, shout out to my brother, you know, uh, from another mother, Chris. We had this happen to us probably in, 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 in within a month, maybe a month and a half. All started one day, we go to this, this bar club, you guys who are local, it was Blue Martini in Kendall. Um, those of you who are not, it's, it's, a, it's a bar restaurant, more bar than restaurant, but they do serve food, especially during the midday, um, and sometimes they have brunches, but it's more of a bar, bar club. So we're there, we danced the night away, had a great night, it was me, Chris, and Chris's cousin. And we're walking out, and I'm forcing us to walk, not Chris. I'm forcing his cousin. We got to go. Me and Chris got to get up a little bit early. It's already like 3 in the morning. We're walking out, maybe 4 in the morning. We're walking out. There's absolutely nobody. It's just it's just vacant as fuck. And, and we're walking towards our car. You know, we're, we're in a, it's a plaza, like a mall plaza. And it's a nice cemented, you know, walkway. We're going to walk to our cars. As we walk this way, there's a bathroom right here, men and women. And 
some song comes on, a salsa song, and, and, and this girl says, oh my God, Wes, come on, let's just dance. Let's dance right here. Let's just dance for this song. Let's dance to this song. And I said, girl, we're going to look like we're drunk. We're going to look like some dodo heads here dancing in the middle of fucking, you know, the, of the sidewalk, um, granted, in the plaza, but um, and if there's a cop anywhere, I don't see any, but still, you know, that's not a good look because we're about to go get in our car. You know what I'm saying? We don't want to attract attention. Come on. We don't want to attract attention. And, and I grabbed her, and she gave me this, this, you know, like, sad face. And I said, come on now. And I see this guy walk out the bathroom. He's probably about 10 feet in front of us, maybe. I said, ain't that right, my brother? All, all, all we, all we want to do is get home safe and have, have a good night. And I'm just being friendly. I saw as I'm walking with, with her, and then I take my arm off her, and he goes, and it all happened in a split second. He says, what'd you say? And you can see this guy, I don't know, he's probably been up for two days. His eyes are like red ring. His, his nose was ringed like red. Like, you, you know, he just did a couple of lines. He's, he's ready to go right back into the club and go for another four hours. I don't know. I've um, never touched, you know, the, the cocaine before. So, but it looked like it was. And anyhow, never showed him a threat, never showed him a face. I never, I was in complete friendly mode, ready to go home. I was just saying some silly shit to this girl. And this dude com just winds up and swings on me. <laughs> Luckily, I had some ninja reflexes. And I, I knew that she was right there beside me. So as he swung, I, I just leaned back. I grabbed her. And when I grabbed her, I pulled her down. She kind of stumbled and fell. So I went up to her. I said, Are you, I said, you OK? And she's, what the fuck's his problem? Oh, my God. And she started, I said, calm down. And I walk up to him. I said, oh, you're going to get it now. And as I, as I square up and get ready to, you know, I already had the, the combo in my head, you know, one, two, kick. It was, it was a real quick, easy thing I was going to do. My brother, my homeboy Chris tackles the guy, jacks him up, puts him against the wall. I mean, he jacked him up. This dude was like 5'6", probably about 140 pounds, man. You know, Chris literally had him on his tippy toes. Chris is, is a big dude, but, you know, he, he was jacking up about 100 and something pounds of weight. And yet, this guy's got the, the balls, and I don't know what the fuck is wrong with him to swing on me like that, right? So, um, Chris jacked him up, and I said, Chris, let him go. Chris, no, Wes, no, we're not going to get in trouble. We're not gonna I said, Chris, we're not going to get in trouble. There's nobody out here. There's no cop. Let me just knock him the fuck out. Wes, no, no, no. And the guy starts, he's Cuban, he starts going off on Chris in Spanish. Suéltame, I said, suéltame. Oh, hey, suéltame. Tell him, let me go, let me go, this and that. And Chris tells him, Bro, do you understand he's about to whoop your ass? You need to calm the fuck down. Why the hell did you swing on him? Porque, porque le, porque le tiras un piño, un puñazo, un piñazo. And um, the guy said something crazy. I said, Chris, let me teach this motherfucker a lesson. Let him go. I was all right, Wes. I said, just be ready to go to the car. <laughs> he lets him go. I said, Ben, come. Come, let's do this. I'm going to knock you the fuck out, and you're going to learn a lesson. The guy starts backing up, starts backing up. He doesn't want to fight. He's backing up. He says, I'm going to see you some other time, whatever, whatever. He leaves. So me and Chris, we almost get in an argument. You know, I'm a little fired up, and, and rightfully so. And, and I can understand why Chris didn't want me to swing. And I understand, you know, he, he didn't want to get in trouble. Well, maybe if, if, I, if I hurt the guy, you know, cops might this. You never know when a cop pulls up. I get it. I get it. But my argument to him was, and I told him that that night, I said, Chris, I get everything you said, and I love you, and I appreciate it, but listen, man, sometimes it's worth taking that chance, in my opinion, because I feel like I'm doing everybody else a service. I am doing a duty. I am doing, I'm becoming fucking Batman, and I'm taking shit into my own hands, and those type of cocksuckers need to be put in their place. A great ass whooping, a fucking knockout, will make that guy think two, three, four times before he ever snorts another line, thinks about swinging on somebody, especially somebody bigger than him. Whatever it is, I would have wired him or I would have knocked him out. And he learns his lesson. Now, some of y'all might argue, no, he'll, he'll, he'll want to come back stronger. He'll be, he'll be worse. Most people will say that's not true, especially mixed martial artists. When you get your ass beat, when you tap out, when you lose a fight, when you get bloodied up, whatever the fuck it is, even if somebody got the best of you during uh, practice, during training, it humbles you. And you, you rethink everything about your approach. So the same thing happens when you deal with somebody like that, okay? Jail is not enough sometimes. Prison is not enough sometimes. A great ass whooping, yes. Uh, a huge sentence, yes. 
Um, you know, things of that nature is different. A big loss, yeah, that changes somebody. I mean, I mean, like a big loss could be a loss of a, a loved one, uh, funds, house, whatever. So he gets, he gets what I'm saying, but he still, you know, chooses the latter and whatever. Okay, not even a week later. We're at a, another bar, another club, and I mean, again, long. I don't want to bore you guys with the details. Long story short, same shit happened. It was at the bar. Chris knows better details than I do, and we were just talking about this. And once again, he calmed me down and he said, "No, man, let's not let's let's not get in a fight. Let's not get in a fight." We totally got shitted on, disrespected, and tried like like Willie Lump Lump, the neighborhood chump. Like it was it was it was whack. And to the point that Chris was mad and he had to walk away too, but he chose to walk away. And I'm like, you know, let's whoop these boys' asses. Like, quick, fast, in a hurry and get out of here. So I say this, guys, and, and I don't want to get too far off track because if given the right opportunity and everybody everybody has to sleep in the bed that they, that they, you know, make. So if you make a decision that others would consider unwise because, you know, you're willing to face, you know, the repercussions, whether that be a charge, you know, uh, who knows? I don't know what it'll be, but you know, you, you, I know some of you guys are gonna go off the wall and be like, "Oh no, too many people getting killed nowadays," or this and that. Every scenario is different. I'm not talking like in the middle of fucking the city, surrounded by ten guys and taking my shirt off. Come on, man, I'm not saying some shit like that. But that dude that Joe Schilling put to sleep, nine times out of ten, he'll, he won't do that type of shit again. He'll rethink life and everything. He's trying to sue. He's going to do a civil suit against Joe Schilling. Uh, I think Joe has nothing to worry about. I really do. Like, the, er, the, all the evidence is in the video. The flinch is enough. That's it. That is an attempt to an assault somebody. That is a charge. And Joe just reacted. And that's just it. So I think he's good. I think he'll be good. I like what he did. I would love for you guys to look up that video. It's, it's pretty short and it's really good. And you can even see what, what, what Joe Schilling says about it. I'd love to hear you guys' comments about it. So please, drop a comment. If you like what you see, man, drop a like. That shit really helps on the, the YouTube channel, man. I appreciate you guys for vibing with me. And I'll talk to you on the next one. Peace. <laughs>